Hey guys, Craig McCormick here from DestructivePixels.com and today I want to share with you my five must-know keyboard shortcuts for Lightroom. So before I jump in here, I just want to say these are the keyboard shortcuts that I use a lot. But if you use a keyboard shortcut that you don't see in this video, put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what it is. Share with us what is the keyboard shortcuts that you use all the time in Lightroom. Share it with us so we can all learn all the different keyboard shortcuts that Lightroom has to offer. Now this first shortcut is something I use all the time. It works in both the library and the develop module and it's called full screen mode. All you need to do is just hit the F key on your keyboard and whatever picture you're selected on, it will blow it up full screen. Now I use this a lot when I just want to look at the picture with no distractions, with nothing else around it. And just to get back to where you were, you just hit the F key again and that takes you right back to where you left off. Now this second shortcut kind of works in the same way as the full screen mode, but it's called lights out mode. And what it is, is whatever image you're selected on, no matter what the scale is within inside of Lightroom, this works again, both the library and develop module. What it does is it takes all the background elements apart from the picture and darkens it up. Now they've actually got a couple of different modes. They've got one which is quite dark and then they've got black and then they've just got normal back to the complete interface. Uh, and I use this quite a lot when I just want to have, I don't need to blow the picture up full screen, but I almost want to know what the the picture looks like on black or just a little bit more focus on the image so again just hit the L key on your keyboard and you can toggle through the different lights out modes now this third tip is something I use in the library module all the time and this is the pick and reject flags so when I come back from a shoot and there's a whole bunch of images that I've shot I want to know just the pictures that I want to work on and what I do is I scroll through all the images and if I see something I know I want to work on I hit the letter P on my keyboard and that flags it as picked and if I see an image that I really want to get rid of, whether it's blurry, out of focus, or it's just a rubbish picture, I hit the letter X on my keyboard and that rejects it. So once I've gone through all the images in my shoot and I just want to see the pictures that I flagged as being picked, I go up to the top of the library module and I can search by attribute. And from here, you have a bunch of different options that you can search from, but I go by the picked flag. And then all it does is it searches for all the images that have been flagged as picked. And it's a really great way just to see the images you want to work on. So again, that's the letter P to pick your images, for, to flag them as picked, and then X to reject them. So I wanna tack on another little thing here related to the pick and reject flags. If you wanna delete all the rejected pictures within that little collection, all you need to do is hold the command and delete key or control delete on Windows. And that takes you to a separate little window where Lightroom asks you, do you want to delete all your pictures from Lightroom or do you want to delete them permanently from the computer? So this is a great way to just get rid of all the pictures that you are never ever gonna use. Just hit the command delete or control delete on Windows and that deletes all your rejected pictures. Now this next keyboard shortcut is specifically for the develop module and it's to get an accurate black and white point. In the basics panel inside the develop module, to get an accurate black point, you just hold down on the little mo uh, little nodal in the black slider and you hold down the alt or option key and it brings up a little mask here and it shows you and you're sliding it down to the black point and you can see where it's, it starts to become black in the image on the mask, that is your actual black point. And again, this works very much the same way for the white point. You hold down the alt or option key and you click on the little nodal for the white slider and you're dragging it to the right up until you see little white specks and this way you know you have an accurate black and white point this is really useful if you don't have a specifically very color calibrated monitor at least this way you know that you have a very accurate black point and a white point now holding down the alt or option key in the develop module sliders has a bunch of different uses and I'll share with you one of my favorites. In the details panel, when in the little sharpening section, you can add as much sharpening as you want with the sharpening slider. But if you wanna mask some of that sharpening, you go down to the masking slider, you hold down that alt or option key and you click on the nodal for the masking and you start dragging it to the right, you can start to see black being added to your image and white. And it's basically a Photoshop mask. Black conceals and white reveals. So what is being white or gray is, being, is having the sharpening added to it. And what is black, the sharpening is being masked away. This is really useful so you don't just add global sharpening to the entire image. You just add very specific sharpening to one section. And it's really quite smart. It knows not to add sharpening to sky. That's generally the first thing it takes away when you're doing that masking slider. So if you use the alt slider, the alt or option key, rather, in the different sliders in Lightroom, what is one of your favorites besides the sharpen tool? Let's hear it in the comments below. 
So the fifth and final keyboard shortcut here again is very specific for the develop module, but it's really quite useful. If you want to reset a slider, pretty much any slider within Lightroom, you just double click on the name of it and that resets that slider completely. And that is a lot better than trying to double click that little node because we all know sometimes we double click it and all we do is just nudge it a little bit because it's a little finicky. So if you want to reset a bunch of sliders, you just need to double click on the names of those sliders. Really useful tip. I use that all the time. So I know I've already done five tips here, but I wanna throw an extra one in here for good measure. And it's really simple in the develop module, just hit your backslash key and you get a global before and after of your image. I find this really useful sometimes just so you can get a sense of where the image was when you started and where you are now. Uh, Cause sometimes we go a little bit too far when we're processing the image. So just do a before and after, hit that backslash key, gives you a complete global overview of what you've done to that picture from start to finish. Again, just hit that backslash key, really useful to have in the develop module. So those are my five plus one keyboard shortcuts that you must know in Lightroom. But if again, if I didn't mention a keyboard shortcut that you use all the time in Lightroom, put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what it was so we can all learn together and share keyboard shortcuts that we find useful to make our workflow a lot faster. And if this is your first time here, I'd love to have you subscribe. I do weekly photography videos related to gear, tips, tricks, techniques, tutorials. Uh, I do a bunch of different kind of things for photography. I also do a very unique kind of video where I actually take a little video camera and I vlog my entire photo shoots. That's right, I go out and I take pictures and I bring a camera and I bring you guys along with me for the entire ride from start to finish, uh, from going to the location, setting up my shot, all the settings I use. I show you the preview images, uh, it's really fun people seem to be enjoying them so if that sounds like something of interest to you check out the little thumbnails below here and it will take you to the other videos and if you want you can subscribe i really really appreciate that but again i've been craig mccormick thank you very much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one